I don't really do tool reviews on this channel and I've been contacted a number of times by Banggood to do tool reviews and I've always declined until this time. I've always wanted to upgrade my standard issue miter gauge that came with my table saw and when I saw that Banggood was selling this particular miter gauge, I responded to their last email and said that I was interested. But before we start, I want to take this opportunity to make a few things clear. Banggood did send me this item for free in exchange for an honest review. And although YouTube's rules required me to mark this video as a paid promotion, I want to explain why I don't agree with that label. Firstly, in my mind, paid means paid with money, and I'm not being paid to do this review. Being paid money and receiving an item for free are two very different things to me. And secondly, in my opinion, promoting an item means only saying positive things about it and recommending or encouraging people to buy that item. I'm not doing that in this video. This video is just about my observations and opinions, so watch through to the end to hear those and for a special discount code. Now let's look at what's in the box. Okay, I have everything unpacked now and on first impressions, my expectations have been exceeded. Starting with the packaging, it was very good. There were individual boxes inside a main outer box. I don't see any damage or scratches on the parts, which is good. I'm not sure about that inside box being damaged slightly, but it doesn't seem to have affected anything. The quality of the parts appears to be very high. Everything looks and feels solid. The fence is heavy and solid with that extra layer of hard plastic inserts on it. The miter gauge runner is made of a solid aluminium bar that looks about 10 millimeters thick. The indexing plate and locking lever are made of three millimeter stainless steel. The angle markings are engraved into the plate. The adjustable flip stop feels solid too, but for me, the best parts are these brass knobs. They're knurled, solid brass and feel so nice. This locking handle is like the jewel of the whole miter gauge. It's 30 mil diameter, solid brass, very weighty and just feels good to hold. So let's get to putting this together and see how good the instructions are. The instructions are in two languages, being Chinese at the front of the book and English towards the back. As you can see, there's plenty of drawings too. The first section is a list of parts that make up the miter gauge and I had these tenon guide blocks listed that weren't part of my kit. The instructions were confusing at first look because they go straight into how to set up and use the miter gauge for tenoning on a router table and show the use of those tenoning guides that weren't supplied. As you try and make sense of this section, you soon realize they're talking about making box joints. Why these are the first instructions, I don't know. The instructions on how to set up the miter gauge for use on a table saw are at the back of the book, which seemed a bit backwards to me. As far as I could tell, the simplified version just has the aluminium fence and the advanced version has the plastic inserts attached to the fence, like the one that I have. First task was to adjust the expansion rings on the runner to get a snug fit in the miter slot. The expansion rings are a great feature, easy to adjust, and this model has four of them, which ensures a good fit. However, the instruction manual refers to four expansion rings, but I could only see three, and it's not mentioned where the fourth one was, so I had to work that out for myself. The fourth expansion ring wasn't installed and goes under the locking lever, but when I tried to remove it, I couldn't undo that screw at all. It was bending the Allen key, and I didn't want to strip or break anything, so I had to work around it. My only concern with the expansion rings is that there's not much pressure being exerted on the screws, so it's yet to be seen if they'll loosen over time. If they do, some Loctite or thread locker should fix that. I would have also preferred if the locking lever was spring-loaded. I think it's a little improvement that will make this miter gauge even better. To use this miter gauge as a standard table saw miter gauge, you have to remove these positioning bars that are used for cutting finger joints or box joints. And that's when I worked out what that cutout in the aluminium fence is for. It's to install the T-track nuts for the positioning bars. I didn't like this large gap that was left in the fence, which as you can see would be a problem when cutting small pieces. You'll see later that I just swapped the plastic inserts to fix that.
The adjustable flip stop feels solid and is another great feature that I didn't have before, so I was happy about that. It needed to be loosened a little to work smoothly, and it did so without any play or deflection. The flip stop installs on a T-track on the top of the fence. I could now fit the fence to the gauge, which is pretty straightforward, other than that cutout in the aluminium causing a little bit of frustration whenever the T-track nuts had to pass through it. With the mitre gauge together now, I could check if it was square, and it was very close. You can see here that it needs the smallest amount of adjusting, which is easily done by turning these grub screws in or out and then locking the fence back in place. It only needed a very slight adjustment. And that's a perfect result, as good as I can measure with the tools I have. And the 45 degree check is also exact. The indexing plate only has slots at every 5 degrees and can rotate up to 60 degrees, but does include two extra slots at 22.5 degrees. Time for its first test cut, and the mitre gauge felt smooth and solid. That huge knurled brass handle feels good to use. And the result was spot on. The position of the retaining washer at the end of the runner didn't suit the depth of my mitre slot and was pulling the end of the runner down below the table surface, which was making the other end sit up higher. And this also caused it to get caught if the runner was pushed beyond the end of the slot. The solution that I had to come up with myself was to add spacers to the retaining washer to lift the runner up, but then that caused another problem. The screw was now too short. It was just a stroke of luck that I had the exact size screw needed, otherwise I'm not sure where I would have gotten one from. If you need any justification for hoarding things, this is it. Problem solved. I'm sure different table saws have different depth miter slots, so I think it would be a good idea if a spare longer screw was included with the miter gauge. The last thing I did was adjust the gap between the fence and the blade, and lift the fence just slightly off the table so it wasn't scraping along it. The kit also included some spare parts, an end cap for the aluminium fence, four expansion rings, and two grub screws to adjust the fence. That's the retaining washer screw I replaced, the positioning bars I removed, and the three supplied Allen keys. So my final thoughts on the mitre gauge is that I'm very impressed. Just the, the quality and the workmanship and the materials that they've used to make it, it's just very heavy, feels very solid, and looking at it, it is very solid. As you saw in the video, it appears to be very accurate. I haven't had a chance to use this extensively, so um, just going on by what um, I showed you guys, it seems to be very accurate. Yeah, you know, stainless steel components. Again, these brass knobs, they're just fantastic. Um, like the shining light of the whole miter gauge, basically. Uh, they feel good and it just, it just shows quality. For anyone who wants an upgraded miter gauge but are on a bit of a budget, at the time of this video, uh, the price Australian is $158 including postage and American $92. Uh, obviously, prices will differ depending on what, in what country you're in. But it's very comparable to much higher end miter gauges of the same style, but it seems that the price is below those other ones. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'm just giving you my opinions and observations about the miter gauge. I'm not going to tell anyone that they should go and buy it. You should do your own research and make up your own mind about whether it's uh, suitable for you or not. But um, in closing, I'm very happy with it.